I'm in the garage, I'm not in the workshop, and I'm fitting a pair of discs and pads to the front of a Volkswagen up. So let's go into the garage and see how we do it. I looked on YouTube to see how to do this. I think there were two videos on how to do it on the Volkswagen up. So I thought I'd show you how I do it. I haven't got any fancy four post lifts and all the equipment that the garages have. Just basic tools, how I do it in the workshop. Well, the first thing we need to do is get the wheel off the ground so we can take the wheel off and get up the brake caliper. These wheel trims they just pull off. Before I jack this up I'm going to slacken the wheel nuts off because um, once you jack it up you've got no way of stopping the wheel turning so it's easier to slacken them off now rather than have to lower the jacks again as usual when you have tyres fitted to tighten these up with an air gun and go on and do them so what I'm doing is putting an extension bar onto my ratchet They're far too tight. If you broke down on the country lane in the middle of the night, you'd never be able to change your spare without some help. Okay, I've jacked the car up, turned the wheel so that the caliper's facing out. I have a yellow jack that's holding the front part. This red one is just a support, just in case the yellow one leaks or goes down. Um, I'm not getting under the car. If I was getting under the car, I'd have axle stands and remove the jacks altogether. Never trust the jack, the hydraulic jack, to hold your car up. If it springs a leak, it'll let the car down, and if you're underneath, it could crush you. So always use axle stands. If this goes down, the other one will stop it. If that doesn't stop it, the brake just will touch the floor. So the first job is to take the caliper off. At the back here, and you can see, looks like a rubber tube. On the end of the tube is a plastic cap, and inside that, is a 7mm hexagon so you can remove the two hexagon screws. These are also sliders so the whole caliper should slide up and down on the frame. You can see here take a screwdriver just tap the cap off that's the cap, plastic cap and there's one on the top and the one on the bottom. I'll take that one off as well. Now take a 7mm hexagon wrench. It should go inside the hole locating the hexagon. Same on the bottom one. If I can get this one out, 
I'll show you what it looks like. It's um, hexagon in the end, and that's a slider where the caliper flies in and out. And as you can see on that one, it's all gunged up with black. So I'll put that in the lathe and just use some emery cloth to polish it up. There's the bottom one. You can see that's all black as well. That's gone rusty on the end, so that's probably why the calipers are sticking. To get the caliper off, you need to pull the top part of the caliper out so you can get this lug underneath from in front of that bar to the top and then you should be able to pull the caliper off now hold the caliper on the top there don't let the caliper dangle down on the pipe because you could damage the pipe once more this pad is nearly down to the steel the other pad looks okay and this pad I should just come out it's just a spring loaded clip that goes into the piston you can see the piston there virtually fully extended now before you can fit new pads, you need to push this piston back because you'll have no room to get new pads and the disc in the slot. So to push the piston back, you need a tool. Line it up with the piston square. As you turn the handle, the thread pushes that in, and you can see the piston going back into the housing. The one thing I would suggest is you check your reservoir level, make sure that it's not all coming out the reservoir all over your bulkhead. I've already done that with the other side. I'll let that go at that. I may need to do it again when I put the pads in because this will probably push forward slightly. So what I'm going to do is use the cable tie and tie this up on a spring out of the way. The cable ties take in the weight and not the brake hose. Here's the pad. Pad fits in there. The pad should move in and out on these two sliders, which are all rusty, so I'm going to file these up and give them some grease, copper grease. Remove the disc, put, clean it all down, put the new disc on and then we're ready to put the pads in. So to take the disc off, what we have to do is remove this star headed countersunk screw. some WD-40 around the centre let that soak in just tap it from the back the disc will come off and what we need to do next 
is remove the rust from this face before we fit the new disc. Okay, I've just taken the rust off the face. I'm not bothered about the diameters here, just this face, because that's where the disc will mount. Now I'll tidy up these here. taking off the surface rust because this is where the pads locate they run on the top of this this rail and the, the front and the front and the underneath and the top rail so just make sure there's no lumps on there rust ready for the disc to be fitted. Right, here's a new brake disc. Now before I fit the brake disc I'm just going to spray it with some brake and clutch cleaning fluid and then wipe the surface to take off the protective layer of oil or grease or whatever it is on the surface oh. turn it over you can see on here there's like a greasy film So that's nice and clean. This is the hole you use to screw the disc to the flange and then the wheel bolts go through these four holes. I've just put some copper grease along the areas where the brake pads will run and a small amount in the two sliding holes Okay, just a quick safety thing. Don't wear these type of gloves if you're working on the lathe because they stretch, they get caught on things and they'll pull your hand into the lathe. I'm just polishing up the guide rods for the caliper. That's how they look beforehand. This is black, I think it's grease that's just gone hard and stuck on. I've just run some emery cloth across just to take the black marks off still a bit on that one I don't want to remove any steel from the pin I just want to remove the black dirt and marks This is probably what is stopping the caliper from centralising, sliding in and out.
So I've got rid of all the black stuck on grease. I'll put some copper grease on that and then assemble them back into the caliper. The brake pad with piston side fits into the piston. This does a spring clip and the other one fits into the caliper. Now if you push your piston back far enough you should be able to slide this on the disc, get the bottom part here on the inside of the slider, the top of the pads on the outside and make sure it's lined up. Then you should be able to tighten up the two sliding bolts to fit the caliper. Just tighten the two sliding bolts to bolt the caliper back onto the hub. It's ready now for the wheel to be replaced. It just moves freely. Now before you finally put the wheel on just check that the brake hose is not kinked, it's not leaking. All looks okay, nuts are tightened and the plastic caps have been fitted. Here are the two pads off the other side. You can see from that one is down to the steel on the pad and the other one has still got plenty of brake pad on there remaining. The edge of the steel here was rubbing on the disc. I wasn't going to replace the discs until I saw that this one was worn down about two millimeters on the one side and about one millimeter on the other. But while it was jacked up, I just put the wheel nuts on and tightened them up with the wrench. Now it's on the floor, the jacks have been removed, I can tighten this up properly. Replace the wheel trim. Then the next thing I'll do is pump the pedal a few times till I get a solid brake pedal. That's because pushing the piston back, I've pushed all the fluid back into the reservoir. Now, once I pump the pedal, it will pump the fluid back through to the piston until the pads are clamped up onto the disc. And then it's ready for a road test. Replace the wheel trim. And now it's time for a test drive. I'll let the wife do that. <laughs> oh well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was interesting. And I'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.